In this video, we'll be taking a look back at my garden eels. I kept garden eels from about 2012 to 2016, and the only reason I don't have them now is I had to give them away before I moved. The prospect of moving 300 plus pounds of live sand was not very appealing to me. The first time I saw these guys, I wasn't really sure how hard or easy they would be to keep. So I bought a few and set up this little 15 gallon tank plumbed into my frag system. Initially I had to feed them live brine shrimp, but it was very easy to transition them over to frozen food. And it wasn't long before I had a full-fledged garden ale tank set up. This is my 90 gallon tank, which held cuttlefish prior to the garden eels. As you can see, I did keep them with some fish. The fish were not a problem once the garden eels were comfortable. Uh, I did wait several months before adding fish. The big thing about garden eels is they are afraid of everything, including their own shadow. While something like firefish or a bangai cardinal or there's a copper band butterfly and I had a few other fish in them with them at various times were all fine. They didn't harass them. They would still be occasionally frightened by the fish, but again, even their own shadow frightens them, so having some fish is not a big deal. What was a big deal was you have to feed garden eels a lot. It's not that they eat a lot, it's that they will only eat food that passes directly over them. They typically never leave their dens. Uh, the only time they will is to switch dens and I guess to mate too. But they spend their whole lives in these holes and if food doesn't pass them, they don't eat. Because of that, I had to heavily feed the tank, as you can see here, and the fish just kind of helped eat the leftover food. I did get a little bit of cyanobacteria on the sand, but I didn't really run this as a reef tank. That's not to say you can't keep garden eels in a reef, it's just the reef has to be built around them. Here's some footage a couple years later. This is pretty cool as it's taken with a GoPro. You can see I had a little twin spot goby and he lived for a few years. They're generally hard to keep, but with several hundred pounds of sand, he found lots of critters to eat. The primary diet of the garden eels was PE mices, at least until I started getting LRS foods available locally. The PE mices was a lot bigger than the brine, so they kind of got scared of it, but eventually their hunger would overtake their fear and they would eat it. They were just such a unique creature to keep, uh, something completely different, and they were funny looking too, so. I really enjoyed keeping them and I do hope to have them again at some point. The one thing to keep in mind with garden eels is they do absolutely require a deep sand bed. I wouldn't go shallower than six inches and even that I would still go deeper. This 90 gallon tank had a sloping sand bed that started at about 10 or 11 inches and worked its way down to four. I only kept rock on the one side of the tank so they had lots of space in the sand bed. These guys are all spotted garden eels. Uh, you may have caught a glimpse of one in this footage of an orange one. Those are splendid garden eels. I found those guys were a lot less hardy. I don't know if it was because I only had one or two of them in with the spotted at a time, but they didn't do as well. These guys were fine for years, and as far as I know, at least a few of them are still alive today. It's always fun to have a secondary tank with something different in it. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily try and keep these guys in my reef tank, but it's pretty easy to set up a second tank once you have one, and if you're not keeping coral in with it, water quality is not as much of a concern and although the tank didn't have much live rock in it, having 300 plus, I don't remember exactly how many bags of sand I had in here, uh, the live sand was a great filtration tool. If you have any questions about keeping garden eels, I'd be more than happy to answer them. 
There's still not a lot of information out there on them, but again, they are pretty straightforward to keep as long as you put their needs first and everything else is needs second in the tank. Thanks for watching and happy reefing.